Welcome back to Garage Matters. Today we'll be doing an oil change on this 1994 Toyota Celica GT4 WRC. This car takes roughly around four and a half quarts of motor oil. Here I have five quarts of 10W30. We're gonna stay with the manufacturer's recommended oil weight. Also, I'm gonna try out this uh, Japanese oil filter. Supposedly it says it's a magnetic oil filter, twin power uh, filters in it, so. We're gonna try this Japanese version, see if it's any good. In the past, I've always used Mobile One Full Synthetic on all my vehicles, but for this car in particular, I'm gonna start using Royal Purple. I've tried it um, once before, and what I noticed was my engine actually sounds smoother and it's less noisier. So for some reason, I don't know what it is, but there's something inside here that actually makes the engine run smoother. What we're gonna do is go ahead and get this vehicle on jack stands, that way we can get underneath the vehicle and access the oil drain plug and the oil filter. So With the weight of the vehicle supported by the jack stands, we're gonna leave this jack underneath the car just in case. We'll go ahead and pull this oil pan over here underneath this drain plug and start draining the oil. Underneath here on the oil pan it's going to be a 14 millimeter bolt. We're just going to break this bolt loose and start draining the oil. That looks about good enough. Once it starts dripping out slowly like that, you're probably not going to get much more out. So we'll go ahead and put this bolt back on. I always like going hand tight first. That way nothing's cross threaded. Hand tight. Wipe everything off. Tighten her down. Alright, once she's wiped down, she should go about should be using a torque wrench, but I've been doing this so long, I'm just gonna hand tighten it. Should be around 20 to 30 foot pounds, but it's gonna hand tight it once it gets nice and snug. It's good enough, you don't need to over tighten it. Okay, that's probably good enough. Next thing we gotta do is take this splash guard off. Uh, we don't have to completely take it off, but we can just loosen some of it so we could drop it down to access the old filter that's up here. Normally, it'd be held in by a few 10 millimeter bolts, but um, this car is so old, all the studs and bolts, the threads, they're snapped off, so I use zip ties. Once this splash guard is lowered, you can access the oil filter. Should just be hand tight because I didn't tighten it on that much last time. Sometimes, depending on who reinstalled this oil filter last, you can normally turn it off by hand if it was hand tightened. If not, you'll have to use an oil filter wrench. But we'll see if we can tell it and take it off by hand. Once it's done draining, we'll go ahead and wipe it down, fill the new oil filter with oil, and reinstall it. 
Alright, let's take a closer look at this Japanese oil filter. Can't read Japanese, but it kind of looks like it's pretty good, I guess. Uh, I've been using this for a while now, and I haven't had any issues with it, but I uh, bought a couple extra, so I'm going to use it all up and then probably try something else. We'll go ahead and get it open. Same thing here. Twin power. Magnetic wall filter. Made in Japan. We'll go ahead and lubricate this o-ring right here. Once it's lubricated, we'll pour the oil back in here, reinstall it. I don't know if you can tell, but this oil is actually purple. So it's not gonna be that nice clear golden color like frying oil or anything. It's a nice purple color. Alright, this is ready to go back on. We'll go ahead and reinstall it. Everything's hand tight. This filter is gonna seal pretty good anyway, so there's no need to crank her on there or anything because you're gonna have issues taking it back off later. But that seal is gonna create a good seal to keep the oil from leaking. Hand tight's good. This is good enough. And then what I'll normally do is just kind of take a look underneath here from time to time, just make sure nothing's leaking. Alright, go ahead and wipe everything down. Alright, with the oil filter, double check that it's on good. Drain plug, double checked. It's on, we can go ahead and close this back up. And then start filling it with oil. Alright, with the splash guard reinstalled, you can go ahead and take the jacks out, remove the stand, and lower the car. Alright, we'll go ahead and remove the oil cap. Put the funnel on. Start pouring the oil in. Alright, that was exactly four quarts inside this engine, so we'll go ahead and check this oil. Make sure it's good enough to start. Well, looks like it's pretty full. That's a full mark. I know there's four quarts of oil in there, because I'll pour four in there. So we'll go ahead and start it up, let it run for about 10 minutes. And then uh, let the engine rest, check the oil again, top it off if needed, and then go out for a drive. So what I'm doing, I'm just looking around the engine to make sure nothing's leaking. Look up here, look back right down underneath the car, make sure nothing's leaking, everything's good. Underneath the car's looking good. 
Uh, the dash is looking good as well. There's no little oil pressure lights coming on, so I know there's not oil in there. But once we turn off this engine, we'll go ahead and check the oil instance again, make sure it's at the proper levels. Go ahead and check the oil one last time. Make sure it's good. Right at four and a not four and a half, right at the half mark. I'm just gonna put just a little bit more in just to make sure. Well we would have picked the car out and took it for a test drive, but it, unfortunately it's raining. Well on the other hand, it'd be really good to do some donuts in this car in this wet weather. But anyhow, that's how you do a whole change on 1994 Toyota Celica GT4. Join us next time on Garage Matters and remember. Like and subscribe.